Think about the bacteria in your gut. It's like a rainforest. We're beginning to realize that the rainforest starts to grow from the first days of life, so that all those interactions are optimal for the human condition, the human being. The flora is not well established. You can have an imbalance in the immune system, which can lead to allergy, which is epidemic in the Western world, or it can lead to um, diabetes, it can lead to autoimmune disease, and so on. The hygiene hypothesis is a, a major hypothesis which really says that our Western way of living, the modern way of living, is very clean. It means that our babies, in the early years of their life, they're, let's say, not exposed to a natural bacterial environment. And those bacteria are triggers for the immune system of the baby. A little bit of dirt doesn't hurt. The fact that you have it on your hands and it, it's in the baby's environment is not a negative thing for the baby. That's what babies do. They creep around, they get in the, the stuff, and it goes in the GI tract, and it develops their system to protect them for the future. So really, the whole probiotic idea in the hygiene hypothesis is to add back bacteria which are missing Probiotic is a, a live microorganism that generates health benefit in the human. So there's a lot of stuff out there which is not documented, which goes under the name of probiotic, but the real true probiotics are only very few bacteria. And Reutery is one of those. The indigenous nature of Reutery is one of the unique characteristics of this particular bacteria. So it's not something you get with your food, it's something that, you, that should be with you in your GI tract from birth to death. Uh, unfortunately, the humans is beginning to disappear and we want to replace it back in there. The studies of Reutery began in the early 80s when Professor Reuter from Germany uh, actually defined or described the bacterium as such. And research has been going on since then. If you look at the, the clinical data that we have in children, you can see uh, strong evidence that it's um, affecting colic, it's affecting gut motility positively. It'll protect children from infections when they go into a daycare environment, for instance. So it's a prophylactic protection from infection. We have data which is indicating that it's affecting the immune system in children, uh, such that it's preventing potentially long-term allergic disease. And we have uh, data that if you have a child that, for instance, are being treated with antibiotics, that you can um, improve the outcome of the child, that is to say, improve symptomology. The rise in clinical data with probiotics is very, is exponential now, it's growing very, very rapidly. And the physicians in the US are not only seeing that data, but they're also taking part in those studies now themselves. And that in itself is generating awareness of Reutery in the US. So you have all these things, so the, the physicians begin to say, okay, we know it's doing all this stuff, why would you not give it? It is extremely safe. We've been searching the literature for all the years we've been doing the research. We never see any, uh, um, let's say, true adverse events of lactobacillus reutery in babies, adults, children, or anybody. It's a natural bacteria, it comes from the breast milk of a mother. 12 to 15% of mothers have reutery in the breast milk, and it's in our environment. So it's not a dangerous thing in any way. Uh, and that's also a very important point. So there is no real reason not to use uh, the Reutery in infants. If you do take Reutery, you can get colonization of the human stomach with the probiotic. So it tolerates the acid of the human stomach. It tolerates the bile. So when it comes down into the small intestine, it colonizes throughout the GI tract. Some of the early work which was done in avia, in chickens and turkeys, and was also done in, in rats and mice, show um, clearly that if you give these animals uh, lactobacillus reutery from a very early age, you can actually mature the, the GI tract. You can get growth of the length of the villi and deepening of the crypts. The bigger the villi, the more uh, surface area you have, the more nutritional uptake you're going to get, the more healthy the gut. In the ileum, you can actually see an elevation of what are called CD4 T helper cells. And when we did the Danish study, where we took the biopsies from the ileum of volunteers, we could again see exactly the same effect on the CD4 T helper cells. We postulate that this is really one of the basic mechanisms of how the immune system is being affected by lactobacillus reutery intake. In other studies, we've looked at premature babies in the NICU, 
And you can see these babies, they grow better, they get off parental nutrition, uh, which is nutrition through the arm as opposed to um, enteral nutrition. They come out of the hospital in half the time in the initial studies. So there are many aspects here which show that this kind of effect on the gut function is leading to a generally improved, uh, should we say, um, growth and development of the babies, uh, which is one major aspect of why you should give that. One of the unique characteristics of reutery is its ability to produce reuterin. When reuterin comes in contact with the pathogen, the pathogen becomes sensitive to that reuterin. So reuterin will actually inhibit the growth of or kill the pathogen, whilst not affecting uh, the commensal, what we call the commensal bacteria, the good bacteria, so that you get this change in, in good to bad ratio in, in the GI tract. I worked in the pharmaceutical industry before and everybody was doing what, looking at new chemical entities and trying to design drugs and trying to do all sorts of stuff and really looking outside instead of inside. Our optimal health is defined by this ecological small world. This field is really going to be an open field for medicine for a long time to come.